in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Trinity again it was a great time in God's presence. I want us to pray tonight. And um, tonight's teaching is a call. You know, tonight made me understand again the power of being in the spirit and truly what can happen to a man when you are genuinely connected to the flow of what God is doing praise the Lord yes as I came up here and heard Pastor Alpha teaching and then so tonight's teaching is a call if you are not great and you have not seen anything in God, you may not need tonight's teaching. Tonight's teaching is for people who have seen the hand of God. Tonight's teaching is for people who have committed themselves to press into the things of the Spirit. And, um, doesn't mean that if you are just starting out the teaching for you, but this is God speaking to the matured ones tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Come up hither, part one. Come up hither, part one. Unto him who sits on the throne, blessing and honor. To Jesus, the Lamb that was slain, glory and power. Glory and power. Unto him who sits on the throne, blessings and honor. Glory and power Glory and power Forever and ever Forever and ever And ever you reign Forever and ever you reign Forever
I believe that tonight's teaching is going to be very powerful. I began to sense that anointing right from home because of the things that have been communicated by the Spirit and I knew by the Spirit Koinonia is a place of encounters an encounter makes a revelation real to you
tonight again we cry that you will truly take us higher cause us to rise to strange dimensions in the spirit and let the proof be evident oh God that we have stepped higher in the spirit Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please be seated if you can and then be sensitive. Hallelujah. Please be sensitive. Especially for those of us who came from far, you didn't come to waste your time. see let me tell you something about a call and a ministry listen listen see, when God calls a man the anointing is not the only thing that is given you have to understand this every ministry has many standard spiritual features when God calls a man please listen there is an anointing that is upon that man by reason of his knowledge and his personal press into the things of God there is the anointing that is on the office that that man occupies spiritually there is the anointing that is on that man by reason of discerning and being part of the current move of God. they are not the same are we together and then there is the anointing that comes by reason of the dimensions that God wants to take people into based on the truths that are revealed and then at certain levels depending on the call and what office there are covenants please listen that means a vow that God made with that man that as far as it relates to this assignment i have bound myself to do certain things that has nothing to do with even the vessel you see that then there are angelic manifestations listen now there are angels that work with believers There are angelic presence please listen as a believer he said his angels she shall put his angels charge over you there are angelic presence that work with believers but there are angels that don't follow a man they follow anointings they don't need to know who that individual is it's an office the same way they give you an office and there are cars there are pas they don't have to know you it is part of the equipping of the kingdom you see that it's very important and then there are also angelic presence that signify revelations it is not only the anointing that gives revelation the revelation of jesus christ which he gave unto john his servant he said he sent it and signified it by his angel hallelujah so when you're in a meeting like this and you see things like this happen it's an interplay of many things it's not just a generic move of an anointing from an anointed man there are things happening that have nothing to do with the vessel himself there are things that are as a result of the, the health of the secret place of the vessel. There are certain things that are based on the office that is being played. I, I just wanted you to learn and to know this. 
because many times believers just wonder look let me tell you this let me tell you this you see these things God is blessing it's not just that God is proving that a man is anointed some of these people fall in many things are happening at the same time there are deliverances there are impartations there are the, the opening spiritual vistas is like a veil just being open to movement into dimensions this is how people grow this is how people grow it is not my desire to carry some of these graces and these possibilities and just have people watch it <clears throat> when God sends a word to Jacob it is because of Israel that you will also be able to carry these dimensions you see transformation is difficult when there is no reference so God finds a man that represents a possibility and then your spirit and your mind is able to comprehend that dimension as true and possible then you can release your faith and step into it koinonia we call it is it all right if you pray for one minute and just ask the lord you say lord all the graces all the revelations pastor alpha let us know you don't have to stand just pray please pray with desperation and hunger hallelujah praise the lord please be seated revelations 4 tonight will be a mighty time it will be brief so that we'll pray we pray for grace we pray for strength revelations chapter 4 I looked and behold a door was opened in heaven and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me which said come up hither and I will show thee things which must be thereafter come up hither and I will show thee things which must not may be certainty things which must be thereafter Jeremiah chapter 33 and verse 3 Jeremiah 33 and verse 3 how can i see it by myself unless you take over i'll never know it on my own unless you take over take over jesus take over take over Jesus take over How can I see it by myself Unless you take over I will not hear it on my own Unless you take over Take over Take over Take over Cannot learn it on your own unless it takes over. You'll never see it by yourself unless it takes over. Listen, 
there are dimensions you can never see by willpower and study it is given like an initiation until your eyes are open you will never see it he said call on to me and i will answer i will be the one to show you if i don't show you you cannot see it you can study you can pray you can fast but for seeing you may have eyes but you can never see it there are realms that are shown 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 it's called fellowship with the mystery you are brought into oneness with truths and revelations we'll never know it by ourselves unless he takes over we cannot know it by ourselves i'll never hear you on my own unless you take over take over jesus take over take over please sit down tonight is a call to press higher tonight is a call to shake us away and out of spiritual complacency tonight is a call to show us that there is more that regardless of that which we have seen there is more that's why i said if you have not done anything serious in the spirit this message may not be for you this message is for someone who has healed before is for someone who has prophesied before is for someone who is at the cutting edge of the move of god is for someone who has tasted and seen the power and the glory of god tonight's message is for someone who knows what it means to be used by god tonight's message is someone is for someone who knows what it means to have the anointing not guessing come up here he said come up here to a higher realm of prophecy to a higher realm of teaching to a higher realm of visions to a higher realm of spiritual power i'm a student of revivals god has granted me the privilege to study the moves of god please listen and i have studied revivals I've listened to a few senior colleagues and fathers in the ministry talk about revivals either based on their experiences or what they were told please listen carefully and I learned this from a man of God that the current move of God always fights the next move of God that the enemy of the next move of God is the current move because many times listen carefully every move of God comes with a level of outstanding results every move of God comes with a performance in a higher dimension and usually because of the the consistency that will come with that move over a period of time it is easy for those who have mastered the strategy that makes them relevant within that move to plateau in the spirit and not believe that there can be more again now listen very carefully when the healing ministry started listen carefully great men like alexander the way and these generals of god they moved in very strange dimensions but then a time came when the healing ministry seemed to just plateau because it looked like men had gotten to the zenith of what they believed that God could do. When the prophetic came, people rose to certain levels and it looked like those who were the highest manifestors of those gifts just stood at a realm. This is not backsliding. 
this is that you have exhausted every possibility that is within the jurisdiction of that move there is nothing you can do again as far as that dimension is concerned you have exhausted it at that level you will need revelations chapter 4 a time will come when you will find out that every dimension you need to see as written for you by God within a level you have exhausted it you've read it you've preached it you've done everything and let me tell you this listen very carefully I say it with all humility but I have seen you, you see when you start walking with God because of the extent of the downpour listen carefully of visions of revelations you are being open to new things and then especially if you have the privilege of what I call pioneer status that means that you are the among the few to introduce that dimension to a territory because of the scarceness of that revelation there will be a lot to do I mean you are so full of revelation you can preach back to back and there are messages but a time will come when the people within that territory all come into that experience they are baptized into it now listen very carefully remember when you were introducing it because very few people knew about that dimension there was hunger and the hunger will always draw you anything you say there will be an applause for it because very few people could enter that dimension but with time everybody will continue to press as you guide them listen carefully you will get to a point where the least has entered like the ark of noah at that point now you will find out that together the goal for that season has been met because god now used you and showed you a dimension and so for three or four years sometimes you will not even need to study anything new you are so full so full you it's like it's a, it's like an animal that has just given birth and wanting the children to suck when that happens let me tell you what happens usually because of the joy the beauty the honor the applause that comes by reason of your being used by God to produce certain dimensions you may fall into the deception that the zenith of what you communicate is all that there can be and so what you will continue doing is recycling the same thing recycling the same thing recycling the same thing to mean that this realm that I've stayed is all there can be in God revelation starts with John the beloved do you know who John was John was not just an apostle he was called the beloved that means if you arrange all the disciples according to their permit me to use the word according to their spiritual stratification the first will not be Peter the first will be John the beloved there abided these three faith Peter hope James love John the greatest you see that now and John was banished in an isle called Patmos for the sake of the testimony of Jesus Christ and while he was there he said I was in the spirit on the Lord's day that, that's another discussion there because there are things you cannot see he said flesh and blood has not revealed this there are levels in the spirit where until you rise in the spirit you cannot see you cannot know so it says i was in the spirit on the lord's day and i heard first started with his hearing i heard this and that and that and then eventually he saw the church the lamb stands and then he received the dimension of revelation to the seven churches that were in asia minor prophetically the catholic church the complete church because every one of those churches represented a dimension in the body that god was adjusting commending and correcting are we together having exhausted that then he was open to another dimension of worship in heaven are we together and to think that that was all 
john was being told by this revelation that john at this plane that you stand now there is nothing to see again everything has been seen and every instruction has been received notice john was never shown things that will happen from that plane he only saw things that were and things that are that was it then chapter 4 comes and he says come up here and let's go to the future let me show you the things that must happen shortly and john rolls to the future there are realms that when you stand there you will see what has happened and what is happening but you may never see what god is up to you can be a christian you can still be called i learned very early in life and in ministry that as wonderful as fame is it can be dangerous that as wonderful as revelation and leadership is let me tell you this if you ever assume a pioneer status in the spirit you have to be extra careful pioneers are usually the ones who hardly finish read the bible there are few pioneers that finished moses leads the people and never gets into the promised land himself Are you seeing that now? It's very important. It's easy to follow a move that was not introduced by you. It's easy to follow on. Yours is just to observe plate and to conform to it by the Spirit. The nation of Israel did not have to climb the mountain to experience God. They just needed to look at the face of the one who already went what was in the mountain was now on the face of a man so instead of climbing up the mountain they just kept looking at moses and they would have the same experience but it was up to moses to know the next thing that god would be doing are we together now powerful as moses was you can see the extent of his trial and error they will wait behind and wait for him to go and fish out the new move then all of them will come and follow it was because of this moses was instructed to speak to the rock and in anger he struck the rock and because of that he said no 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 no. this was not my program you've corrupted it you cannot enter canaan pioneering the move of god is very dangerous many people like the honor that follows this and that to say oh we are the ones that started this dimension but you see the thing about it is that because you are at that level you will feel indebted to that level you will be emotionally connected to that move you cannot leave it to the next level are we together now yes that you were the first to be to open up a dimension of god to a territory it's like you are the first to start producing this and now when you are aware that this is no longer in use if everybody leaves it you will not want to leave it too because of that relationship that's how it is even with spiritual things there are dimensions that you can be so emotionally connected to because of the experiences that surround that dimension and when another move of god starts coming you will prefer that the move comes to meet you there but not to leave that level and to rise higher that's why i said it is dangerous to pioneer spiritual things it's a noble cause and it's a noble task but the burden on it it will only take the spirit of the living god to help you the second reason why it is dangerous or by dangerous i don't mean it is not advantageous that's not what i'm saying i'm saying that you are in a very vulnerable position the second is that because of the charisma and the ego are we together and the sense of achievement that surrounds that level the moment you and any other move that is happening within that dispensation that you don't seem to be involved in you can preach that it is error or it is satanic or it is demonic because you are used to being the starter you are not used to following 
you are used to starting moves understand what i'm saying you know you see that if you have not done anything in god tonight's teaching may not really bless you john was the first of his kind to introduce this dimension of the prophetic a very strange prophet the bible says of all the prophets none was as great as john so john is in the wilderness eating locust and wild honey a strange dimension of revelation when jesus comes john baptizes jesus and then he's happy that he's baptized jesus even john said i may decrease i'm not sure he understood what he was saying now eventually the disciples of john had to start living to join something that was a move john was never in one of jesus's crusades they didn't hang him the next day they didn't lock him the next day john was alive he was there he never saw the need because he believed that the the emotional connect and the ego of pioneering things did not allow him to go there notice all the people that seemed to be pioneers were those who were offended with jesus the scribes and the pharisees we are the sanhedrin council what are you doing jesus all the followers were excited what is the new thing let us join if it's bread we eat if it's the mountain we climb but the scribe said not so this is not how we have been doing it including john follow me very carefully so john is hearing of the things jesus is doing and a few disciples who are loyal to him too come back look at the pain in john's heart the people he had raised i don't know what john thought he would become but his honor was already there for his assignment completed but john probably believed that he would continue to run that ministry the same way jesus was running it to like a parallel whatever it is and it seemed as though jesus did not have regard for john because we never see jesus making any mention of john go and greet john or john just to tell you your boy is still here the move continues and the fame of jesus is growing john is threatened the scribes are threatened the roman government threatened everything every day was an episode of mighty things listen very carefully follow me i want to show you something powerful mm. one day john gets himself in trouble and he's behind bars about to be beheaded and he sends in offense listen this is the current move fighting the next move go and confirm are you the one that we should be waiting for are you the messiah or is there another it was a sarcastic statement it was not a question that required an answer john was not ignorant he was a prophet and when jesus had it jesus said i know what the problem is it's a weakness in men it's a weakness in pioneers it's a weakness in those who are trusted to pioneer certain moves listen what i'm teaching you is very deep you will listen to what i said some years to come and you will cry when god sent you to a region where they do not know one tenth of the truths that god has taught you and for many years you become a celebrity and a mighty man and god begins to do mighty things in and through you and then one day you will hear and see of things that you were not involved with and you will see. this is the challenge oh, let me not go ahead of myself this is one of the major challenges with all due respect of fathers and senior colleagues in ministry because of the mighty things that god did in and through them and the dimensions that were introduced sincerely speaking not out of wickedness or whatever they were so emotionally connected to starting things that they believe that if god is ever to do anything it is impossible for them to not start it so when they hear that mighty things are happening and they don't seem to be involved they think it's to their honor 
whereas john was not there when jesus commended him as the greatest prophet in other words as far as this move is concerned receive your crown you have done a great job but let the program of god continue and if you are interested you will have to humble yourself and join that move provided you are not pioneering it i will show you those who got it right in the bible one of them was mary no woman as a virgin had ever gotten pregnant it was a new dimension now mary had a right to sit down and say my son jesus my this my that but when she discerned there was a new move she followed them to the upper room and waited quietly the mother of jesus among the 120 who would receive the holy ghost was it not the before some of them were born she had been relating with the holy ghost it was the holy ghost that got her pregnant and now she's coming to receive him in another dimension with humility you understand what i will teach you you will never miss any move of god if you don't get it there are moves that will leave you you will stand in shock it's not backsliding you will just say lord when did this cloud pass me mary got it right john did not it. john was offended i will show you that even jesus got it right he knew that purpose was not just to come and remain on earth he knew the timing and even in advance he began to tell them i am not afraid of handing over because it is in handing over that my honor is multiplied listen so jesus is preparing the people watch this and then he uses a very dangerous statement it is expedient that i go ah. they said no you must remain here you will be king we eat bread we like you remain we like this kind of ministry but he was saying no 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 i'm even coming to i'm a bridge between the old and the new you must be so desperate for god that the position you occupy in the things of God should not matter. You must be so desperate for the things of God like Mary. You can give birth to Jesus and still join to wait. She was not the one leading praise and worship in the upper room. If Mary comes and sits in Koinonia now, I will give her the mic. I will just give her and sit down. What does it like to carry the word of God bodily for nine months? Mary, talk to us, let's learn. I will hand over the ministry to Mary. There was no mention of her speaking. Imagine Mary was there among the 120. So Peter is praying. Remember Jesus told us that in 10 more days, the Holy Ghost will come and Mary is watching them. You know the level of humility it takes to be a mighty mover in a dimension sustain the humility to stand back there is an obsession in men to be known there is an obsession in men to be famous it's a weakness in men please listen back to our story so john is offended and makes a sarcastic statement go and ask jesus whether he's the messiah the same said behold the lamb that takes away the sins of the world now said go and verify jesus we are not sure again do you know what that message would have done to the disciples they would have said if prophet john is now doubting jesus it means we have to be careful it was a sarcastic way of saying be careful with that meeting be careful with that move <laughs> so when jesus had it he laughed he said go and the blind see this and that and the gospel is preached he said blessed is he that is not offended in me then the disciples were now at the center stage and one day listen carefully they heard that there were other people who were not part of their camp there was there were some powerful miracles happening somewhere and the disciples said jesus what is going on here and jesus laughed he said you guys want to make the mistake of john whoever is not against us 
whoever is not against us is for us they were so happy there was a time the, the remember the mother of james and john she wanted to come and see him the disciples stopped her and said what is it we're in a move we're enjoying you see why they were angry when jesus said he was going they said well, what is all this one now so what is our own take on this you have created trouble for us and now you want to leave you are not going anywhere and jesus said no it is expedient that i go i'm going because you will now be on the center stage with the holy spirit and they refused jesus was secured enough to finish his assignment and to step back to say spirit of the living god these are the ones that represent the next move use them mightily i will still be glorified i'm digressing to make this statement so that you will understand i have seen a lot of people who started great things in the body and today they are not benefactors of the next move because their attachment and their ego will not give them the flexibility to blend into what god was doing and so because they are they are being inert in the next move of god will have to require an explanation so they will fabricate an explanation that communicates error and they'll say forget about those people that's one of the reasons why so many people have insulted the prophetic today i know that the prophetic has its own errors i know if the prophetic has its own imbalances but many people because the dealings of god at that time did not open up to this dimension there are people for instance who will see what just happened here and say no way god does not move like this this is nonsense just because god did not move the way he was moving before does not mean he's not the one moving the flexibility to discern the next move of god and that if you are interested you open up your heart and say lord i must not pioneer that move to join what you are doing if it is god and it brings glory to you i'm on my way going it's a very difficult thing difficult thing if you are a follower it's okay but if you are one who moves why will you see mary among the 120 sitting quietly i have looked for certain names who were once great names in the body in as much as the move of the spirit within their time was there and those names are almost silent and there has been no interest to find out what else is God doing and sometimes they have begun to teach that look anything that is outside the scope of what we know is nonsense that is a dangerous thing that is the mistake of John John would have followed Jesus quietly and he would have died honorably there would have been no reason for being beheaded in every crusade jesus would have given him honor even the scribes were given honor as terrible where they never sat outside they sat inside they hated him but at least they followed they followed nicodemus came one day and said jesus let me tell you we are not stupid we know we know we see what you are doing we see the formation of a new move we know that you are a man sent from god for no man can do these things except god be with him except god be with him i'm taking our time to establish this before we begin to build i just felt it strongly in my spirit to tell us do you know why i'm saying this zaria hear me you are a privileged place this is a place that god has put his hand very strongly and many people from here listen god is distributing people from this city across several places and you see when you get to some of those regions you will be surprised that as cheap as some of these revelations we trivialize are you will find out that some of those regions are in utter scarcity and you will be so relevant within a period and if you do not sustain the discernment to know what next when people come into that dimension and you don't know how to come up here you will be in big trouble you will become the biggest enemy
early to the next move of God. Alexander the way was a mighty, mighty healing evangelist. Listen carefully. He created what we call Zion, the Zion city. Are we together now? When, you know, then they didn't have internet and communication was not strong. So you couldn't know what was happening in, in another part of the world. The way was doing a mighty, mighty work. Until a strange woman later appeared called Maria Woodward Eater. Listen. When Maria Woodward Eater appeared, she introduced a dimension of the move of God that they call presence evangelism. That was when people would fall down like this and literally freeze in the same position for hours, having heavenly encounters. And she was a woman. Until then, the way was not aware that something was happening at the other side of the world. The day Alexander the way heard it, history has it. This is confirmed. Alexander the way told everybody that this woman, number one, as a woman, number two, this dimension was occultism. And he used his influence to fight that woman. Her first husband joined that conviction and fought her till he died. The current move of God usually will be the biggest challenge to the next move of God. The same way the law was the biggest challenge to the grace of God. Remember that the Sanhedrin council started by the impartation of the spirit of Moses upon 70 elders. That's how it started. Eventually it had now become a religious place. And when Jesus came, they could not even identify him. So John had exhausted all his revelation within a dimension he had seen. Had John returned back, John would never believe that there were higher dimensions. But then the angel told him, come up here. Please prophesy to somebody, say, come up here. Come up here. And I will show you the things that must happen. I call what I just explained to you the tragedy of complacency that comes with a successful move of God. It is a complacency. It is, it is, it is weaved in men. It is a weakness in men. That when, when you are successful in executing God's desire for a season, usually the impetus to inquire lord can there be more will not be there because there are obvious evidences nobody can come and say you are not anointed nobody can say you are not intelligent the records are there to show that you are anointed the records are there to show you have built a great church the records are there to show you are mighty let me give you an instance in nigeria today the pattern of church growth is that there usually will be a central church like a headquarters is that true and then you will now have branches all together connected do you know that was not how it was before there was a move of god that brought that formation do you know what the next move is because many young people in our generation now every dimension you climb has the strategy for the move of god i'm not saying that is wrong you understand what i'm saying so the way god revealed to our fathers most of them you will find out that there is a central headquarters is that true that coordinates everything then there are branches around the world it was never like that in the history of nigeria in fact before that time the strategy was to have a small church and be dangerously anointed and just hide there like a seer and your job is part and release people that was the strategy of men like apostle babalola it was after his death that cac expanded like that the, the apostolic church and, and all of that when you read about them most of the great pioneers of the churches we have today especially around the west when they were the way they were they were small look at redeem for instance the founder they had not received the blueprint of establishment and expansion like that our fathers stayed with god and god said for this move 
that I am bringing. This is the strategy I am revealing. Are you seeing that now? But as wonderful as that is, it can be dangerous for someone in our generation to just mechanically begin to envisage because in the next 20 years technology has taught us that you must be at the cutting edge of evolution the same way it is scientifically that's the same way it is spiritually so if in our generation your dream is to have branches in every state you are already at the verge of missing something serious because that is not the pattern that will come we must be able to stay and say lord what is the pattern as at the time that move started there was no internet to create so the advantage of connectivity was not there do you know what the move of god will be now that internet is an advantage that a man can sit in his room and be talking to the whole world it's dangerous to be where god was it's dangerous to be where God was. He said, Holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was, who is, and who is to come. It's a dangerous thing to be where God was. It's a dangerous thing to be involved in what God was doing. You have to posture yourself to be relevant in what God is doing and what he's about to do your current level at your current spiritual level you can only see what god is doing that's the limit if you want to see the future you must come up here from revelations one to three there was nothing futuristic it was a revelation of things that were and the things that are the moment he wanted to see the next program of god he was asked to rise to a higher dimension if you're with me say amen. amen so we must trust god for grace to conquer what i call the tragedy of complacency please be careful when you are the greatest of your kind within a territory pray more fast more because the rest are waiting for you to move and if you don't move just like you they will stay and can i tell you something usually when the move of god comes all the followers are just faster because there is no embarrassment like the disciples of john it is usually you you see which is also another reason why listen men of god we must teach as though there is more in god it is dangerous you are teaching doctrines doctrines will not change they are exact spiritual precepts given to the saints but when you are studying the life the character of god you must create a lot of flexibility and i'm the position of a student even before your members so that there is no embarrassment if and when you have to adjust to the things that god is doing if you're with me say amen mm. an arrival mentality is a dangerous mentality for a christian for a man of god an arrival mentality i've seen miracles i've seen signs i've seen wonders i've seen the move of god but could that could could it be that there's more in god than you've not seen now i'm going to make a very serious statement i want you to listen mention names is a father of faith that has gone to be with the lord respected voice in the body a great well, I call him great grandfather now Papa E. Hagen when you read Hagen's books and you see a lot of things that Hagen wrote you will know that Hagen was absolutely at the cutting edge of what God was doing at his time but when you read Papa Hagen's books with the lens of what God is doing now you will find a lot of gaps and the need for improvement which is proof he succeeded it's not proof that he's weak it's proof that he succeeded he left us a template a ladder to build upon it was papa hagin that wrote things like the anointing of the spirit the only medium that the anointing can move upon is a prayer cloth 
and he's right because he saw it in the bible but now we know that that is not absolutely true it was a dimension of truth that was seen based on him the anointing of the spirit is as limitless as god himself are you getting what i'm saying now it's very important let me tell you this i have seen visions of the coming move of god and i have been stretched myself because of the dimension of the things that will happen those dimensions will be fought tooth and nail when i say tooth and nail there are dimensions that even as a strong believer you will need grace from god you will need to look well from the lens of scripture is the reason why god is grounding us on the word now so that when that dimension comes the your dexterity in the word will make you be Listen to what I'm telling you. There are things we have not yet seen on earth that must happen before Christ comes. The Bible records it. There are dimensions we have only spoken about. The prophet said it. If as I'm standing here right now, you just see this mic on the table and I'm out, I'm gone. By this night an internet is going to say finally exposed the voodoo power even from this example some of you are already afraid for me apostle don't do it oh you see let me tell you this yet we read in the bible that the spirit took philip and told him to join the chariot of a man not in a vision a man dematerialized entered the realm of the spirit reformed back and stayed on a chariot and the eunuch was afraid he didn't run away he told nathaniel you will see greater things than this he told nathaniel that you will see heavens opened and the angels ascending and descending upon the son of man let me tell you this the miracles that have stretched us now and the dimensions of the power and the word of god will be child's play compared to the things that god has because the pride of men and this cosmos there must be the introduction of something so divine and powerful to bring the kings to their knees this current level cannot bring the kings to their knees again you can what you call now the move of god go to dubai go to singapore go to the u.s and challenge them they will look at you and say stupid this is what you came to tell me let me tell you the truth we are not going to win the world just by charity i believe in charity don't get me wrong but right now the church is beginning to be so afraid they don't have any other superior result so they just have to blend to feed the poor so that that's the only condition to be accredited by non-christian organizations that the, the world's interpretation of the church's relevance is feeding the poor and hungry and i don't have a problem with it but they are reducing us so everybody's now saying look it looks like the court the in thing now if you don't want to be criticized quietly find orphans or find widows buy sewing machine and color or something just share and snap and the world will say well done this is what you the colder you are the more the world says well done we are now seeing what you are doing there are tv programs today that will not air koinonia like this with what happened no way no way with the move of god like this someone shouting <clears throat> you are creating controversy that will make the regulatory agencies get into trouble Like I said, if you're a new believer tonight, you will need extra grace from God. That's why I, I pre warned you already ahead of time. We need something more than what we have now to bring the arrogance of the kings of the earth. Let me tell you, they have prosperity. They have health. Do you know that most of what we claim the power of God does, we don't even have it well mention three or four things the only thing that the church now in as much as we know can boast of one salvation to the personal communion of the holy spirit 
three the peace that surpasses all understanding but as far as anything earthly is concerned and the things i just mentioned are the things we don't emphasize most of the things we emphasize are the things we cannot defend so we talk a lot about the miraculous and while we are making all that noise someone in dubai has discovered a way of just making what we will do as a miracle cheap and they will soon make it easy and if that happens we're going to be in trouble because a day will come on a crusade ground just sharing a fence will be a free medical outreach with sophisticated machines and those who are not healed in our meetings will just enter there quickly and in five minutes they are giving when that happens i'm not being sarcastic when that happens let me tell you something will go wrong because one day the government can shut down a church and say we have examined and we cannot see your relevance the church is more than a charity organization it is our fear and our inability to rise higher we have a, remember there was a time where the healing ministry the prophetic and all these things was cast on earth the world had not caught up with that dimension so if you had it you could shine but not now not now put a poster and put a wheelchair up nobody could dare question a miracle before but right now someone will come in that crusade ground you will think he came to be blessed he's videotaping everything from your face to the person on the wheelchair they will go and examine the person and say was that leg going to work anyway or was it your prayer that made it work if i have malaria and i've started taking anti-malaria and i'm on day four and you pray for me was i going to be healed anyway or was it the prayer that brought it this is the judgmental spirit that our generation has in the days of our fathers nobody will ask that question it will be on paper mighty things are happening and a crowd now mighty things draw criticism our generation let me tell you this as some of our parents who are here there were many things that they knew that was not the best but they had an unflinching loyalty for the voices in their time nobody would dare stand up and question a man of god if they were not satisfied they would leave him and go home and pray for him remember that talk of pray for him right now a man can be preaching and a young man can stand up and say sir what you are saying no and create a debate there welcome to a new level of living where if we don't get the strategy for now we will be in trouble are we together thank God for prosperity but of the Forbes hundred richest people I'm not sure there are up to ten of them who are tongue so using physical wealth to bring the world to his knees is almost a failed project because there are some of these people who have given 95 percent of their wealth I'm not aware of any believer who has done that now I may be wrong but I'm not aware it means he must take something more than money if it's education the best institutes in the whole world are not christian institutes my brothers and my sisters let me tell you whether it's research whether it's medicine whether it's whatever we have to be honest if it's in the term in terms of well-meaning uh, civilization and all of that go to hedonistic nation that have no for god and look at level of development infrastructure you look at all of these things many of them are already the future of africa in the next 30 years now what then will bring the kings of today's world to their knees when moses went with a rod to meet pharaoh pharaoh said nonsense you left the wilderness to come and show me a rod to become a snake i am pharaoh you show me more We can sing songs and fall down in the church congratulations but let me tell you we need to take something out that can bring the kings to their knees in babylon babylon was a place of wizardry there was something that happened with daniel there was something that happened with shadrach meshach and abednego that made the king to testify the king passed a decree unanimously 
that nobody should bow to any other god again except the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Are we blessed? We must receive grace to not ever believe that what we have seen is all there is. We must obtain grace. Please hear me. If you have history here, thank God for the wonderful things. But you must obtain grace. The second point on what I want to talk about tonight, I'm just charging your mind. The first, I, I put it as the tragedy of complacency and arrival mentality. The second is a condition that must be needed and met in a life if you will ever attract the hand of God that will take you to a higher dimension. It's called hunger and thirst. It's not enough to be ready to move to another level. Hunger and thirst are accurate measures of your spiritual health. The same way when a patient is sick, one of the symptoms in most cases is that you lose appetite. When you lose appetite, spiritually something is wrong. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 6 says, Blessed are they that hunger and thirst for righteousness. It says that they will be filled. Hunger and thirst. John chapter 7 and verse 37. Let's read it very quickly. Boy, my time is gone. John 7 and verse 37. Look up please. In the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. If you do not thirst, you can stay with what I've given with all the days. But in this new day, I have been visiting you, but on this last day, if you are still thirsty, come. Listen, listen, and understand what he's saying. Remember that it was not the first day, the last day. They had benefited from all the other days, but in the last day, he said, if any man thirst, let him come. You have enjoyed the move of God before. You have seen the hand of God before. You have seen the grace of God before. You have seen the sick healed before. And God is saying in 2019, if there is any man that still thirsts, come. If there is any church that is still thirsty, come. Koinonia, if you still believe there is more and you desire, come. That means if you are not thirsty, you can go. It's all right. If any man thirst, let him come. Hunger and thirst, powerful. Without hunger and thirst, there is no appetite and there is no desire for more of God. This teaching, you hear me tell you tonight, if you don't hunger after, it will not make sense. You want to listen to something else. This is a teaching for people who know that there can be more. This is a teaching for many people who know that, Lord, seen you or oh, i've seen you do a lot of things but i know that there is more in you there is more in you this was the mistake of lucifer lucifer saw a dimension of god he was the custodian the librarian of heaven and by the strength of everything he saw he believed he had exhausted all there was in god and then he wanted to rise to run a parallel government with god and there was judgment in heaven and he was brought to his knees that was why when god was recreating man it surprised him because he didn't know that those possibilities were there they were not captured in the truths that were given to him reproduction multiplication through reproduction had never happened it was creation now that a man one man can meet with his wife and have a child that will own ah said something is wrong and so the angels came to meet with the daughters of men to use that strategy to create something else. Hunger and thirst. 
one of my prayers a man of god every time i said lord please you know i've shared it with you here lord do not show me the extent of my impact it's my prayer and i'm saying it even as i'm preaching here just give me a token let me just see a bit of what you are using me to do and i'm grateful and i'm satisfied let me tell you if you think fame cannot influence you think again hmm. was it not the same alexander the way that went to a tailor went to a fashion designer to sew just mantle with the cap that kind of prophet chef cap he sold everything and tied his ghetto behold elijah he read the bible and said this man is me now what is this what have, what has he done that i'm not doing they first started saying you are elijah they no no all glory be to the lord but the time came they said you are elijah's true there are things you will not believe now keep rising tomorrow they will say it and you will believe it how do you think people become jesus i don't mean image of jesus likeness of jesus some gentlemen came here one time from Kano. remember those that those jesus guys and the apostles now i say i don't know if you are here but they came some gentlemen immediately after service and one of them came for altar call as soon as they were done i just saw the gentleman he said he's was it judas one was judas one was jesus and this young man came from Kano. as soon as i saw them i gave them a big hug i said look uh, my, my jesus friend let me tell you something you are in the image listen please i'm teaching you are in the image of christ yes are we together you have attained oneness with christ based on the doctrine of the gospel yes you are in christ one with christ yes are we together now the holy spirit represents the presence of jesus in your life yes but that you are jesus in terms of replacement you are not like that do you think that guy got born again like that not seen people pray under a tree for many weeks and by the fifth week they left that tree mad with strange revelations from beings that were not of earth pride is a dangerous thing fame has a side effect when you begin to clap for you sometimes it becomes embarrassing to step back and let jesus be seen because spotlight is sweet oh oh mine mediocre spotlight can can bless your children's children so when the spotlight is on you you plan to be there forever so that when you shift your child too will be there when you shift your grandchild too will be there but there are times when jesus says that you decrease that you will increase and many times it is embarrassing you know i go for meetings and when i see the mighty things that god is doing or sometimes when i'm teaching and the teaching grace is really on me i see the shock and the wonder on the people and i say oh dear don't be deceived you're only watching a puppet there is one behind me may i never be ashamed to let the world know that i am nothing without him this is not just some humility creed there are many proud people who say this thing i'm saying It's very true you must get to a point in your life where you are not ashamed to stand back and tell the people it is Jesus Jesus ever Jesus only he says and I if I be lifted up from the earth I will draw all men to myself let's get back to what we're discussing hunger and thirst there are times as a man of God come it will be embarrassing at your spiritual level to now join the flock to kneel down and cry for his a greater dimension you kneeling down for the flock can kneel down i'm kneeling down this guy is standing <laughs> are we together watch this a time a time can come huh when everybody is crying for more People are rolling on the ground and saying, Lord, search my heart. And as a man of God, it's not any personality difference. You have led them to the throne room and you are just standing there. There's no need because you have become the throne room yourself. You see, deception is subtle. 
so you will tell them to fast and you too you will not fast what is the need i mean whether i fast or not you see that if you want to be captured in every move of god same hunger that made you climb a tree like a monkey and held on to one branch and cried there and said god i will not come down from this tree except you bless me and god said come down i will show you what you want to see if that same hunger is not there now you can stay in a five-star hotel listen now you have all kinds of entourage do you know sometimes i look at my life today and i thank god for what god has done many times there are times that i wish that i had my life back in the days when nobody knew me fame can be destructive even to your spiritual life i can't go out freely i can't eat freely i can't be myself you see that i can't stroll out to just enjoy what god is doing if someone there catches me there instead of coming to join the line now that i've seen him let me just quickly it's a very embarrassing life it looks like fame but it's dangerous time today is a luxury you must intentionally sometimes close the door to some of this comfort and retreat back listen to me and say lord this is still your boy of before again oh they now call me apostle joshua selman but this is still your boy again and god says are you still as hungry as before he say hungrier than before oh god after the miracles yes sir after the fame yes sir hmm. and then he says now i will take you and show you higher things hunger can be discerned and let me tell you this if you're a man of god please listen your congregation will be a reflection of your hunger the moment you become complacent that impartation will come on them they will strangely find out that the grace is no longer there everybody say hunger hunger almost 80 to 85 percent of the time if you meet me if i'm not studying i'm listening to a message or something there are times i just return from a ministration right there just entering my hotel room you would think i should lie down and cross my leg i started playing a message before i quickly went to go and preach now that i'm back thank god for the mighty things sincerely god is my witness there are a few times that i think about a meeting and what happened once i leave that place it's all right if you ever ask me how is the meeting the only thing you hear is fine doesn't matter what happened the answer is fine that's it one of the mighty things that happened here fine a few times some of you send me pictures and clips of what happened and i look at it whoa you mean this what happened lord i give you praise let's continue do you know why because you see you prepared for today yesterday you don't prepare for tomorrow tomorrow you prepare for tomorrow today they are celebrating what you did yesterday if you are not doing anything today there will be nothing to celebrate tomorrow listen to me you have to learn this those who win olympic as soon as they are done they rest for a while go on a vacation one month and they're already preparing for the next olympic champions don't rest champions move not in a competitive manner there is more in god listen to me you are not going to clap for me now because someone fell under the anointing you may do that for your president in your small fellowship you're not going to say glory be to god koinonia was powerful because someone was shaking no there are testimonies today that if you hear in another church you will stand up and clap i watch here somebody would give a very big testimony and coin up now people just clap one hand and say is this it go and sit down we want something more and you are right you are right Because your capacity is being expanded that means yesterday's food will not feed you give an adult a baby's food and you say this is for what the baby is grateful for having it but the adult is still hungry 
don't you know that the more you grow the more the nourishment must be strong in size and quality the burden of being at the cutting edge of God's move will require you to be listen listen that hunger must remain in you that hunger must remain in you you see all the wonderful things that just happened when the, the meeting just started I go back to God let me tell you something with me and God there are few times and I want to be very sincere with you God is in this place there are few times where God comments on any meeting that I've gone to no this is the realm of champions you don't talk like mediocres I don't come back to God and God says ah son you did a great job in that crusade what for no. let's continue the training like a coach looks at an athlete you are the best in the field and after they snap you and do everything the coach is watching you not in anger he's impressed and once you come he says go and change your clothes wait for me in the field it's proof of his love you have conquered that standard and he takes you higher this is what happened to david david was so david exhausted the realm of his generation and rose up into another realm and began to see the coronation of the messiah the lord said to my lord sit down at my right hand no other prophet saw that it was david that understood the excellency of the spirit the spirit was never given without measure to people please listen and now david had got it he said cast me not away from your presence take not other prophets were comfortable with the holy spirit going and coming david said but i've seen that a move of god will come when this grace the spirit will come and stay lord can i not enter that move hunger hunger took david to the secret place as a king the palace did not mean anything to him he said i'd rather be a doorkeeper i'd rather be an usher let me be an usher the next move than to be a lord in the former move hunger and thirst for you dry and weary land I hunger and thirst for you Try and be the land For all I want is you In spite of the miracles in spite of the revelations, I hunger and thirst for you in a dry and weary land. Yeah. Sing it from your heart. All I want is you. Lord, thank you for the revelations. Thank you for the miracles, for the word of knowledge, the prophetic. But Lord, I thank you for yesterday's wine. But I need the wine of today and tomorrow. I hunger thirst. Listen, you must trust God for your secret place to have such a high standard that no matter what you are doing currently, when you get back to the secret place, you will see that it's a step out of the... If your bar is too small, pride will kill you. If your bar is too small, one successful program will kill you. That's why you see all these young guys listen listen sometimes i talk to them and i encourage them don't let successful programs enter you don't let successful concerts enter you 
are you seeing that there are people whose spiritual lives went down there are people who could not pursue and seek after god again the next move of god success can depreciate your pace because when you are motivated by a need to hit a standard listen it will give you an impetus but where there is no where there is nothing to prove again there is no hunger when you go for a meeting today whether you say god bless you and leave nobody will ever say oh he doesn't have revelation oh come on the track record is there nobody will ever say oh he cannot heal that's why he just did altar call and sat down when you are starting out in ministry the pressure to make your calling and election choice upon you so even in five minutes you want to do everything at once you want to prophesy you want to give word of knowledge you want to heal you want to share the latest revelation but as god begins to crown your 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 your, your life with undeniable graces and honor you get to a point where the pressure to rise is not there and it shows that you have plateaued it shows that you have arrived but when your hunger remains ah. when I was preparing this message I was praying for my own self I said Lord my hunger should be larger than every anybody's own in this ministry otherwise how can I lead hunger I've prayed more but show me something else about prayer I've seen your power before but show me the one I've not seen I've seen your anointing but show me something else I have seen the spirit of revelation but show me something else I have seen angels but show me another dimension at the apex of his apostolic ministry look at a man's hunger that I may know him that I may know him Paul I hope you know the doctrine of scripture starts from the writings of Paul the acts of the apostles down to revelation the gospels do not contain doctrines no the doctrines of scripture are embedded there some of them were just shadows as presented Paul single-handedly wrote to third do you know what it means for a man to create the study curriculum of the church it was not just Jesus that wrote it Paul sat down and wrote to thirds the the limit of our spiritual growth is scripture that is the boundary given to us for growth and a man sat down by the spirit and wrote it yet when that man finished writing it he said that I may know him that I may know him oh God that I may know you that I may know you I have seen your power but that I may know you a man of God said he went for a pastor's conference one time and pastor EA Adeboye was there and when it was time for all the men of God to pray he said he wanted to lie down close to him to hear what kind of prayer a man at this realm will pray and he said when he lay down all through for more than one hour all that he was saying is mercy mercy Lord mercy mercy Lord mercy the young minister there's in power power lord result open doors oh god offering send help us that 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 small kiosk like building must be completed whereas there is a man here with kilometers as an estate and his language and his desire mercy he has learned that one of the most important things is the mercy of Are you getting what I'm telling you now? Hunger. Hunger. If you're a pastor here, please minimize just praying for power and cry for hunger. Go back and buy the same new notebooks you bought that the spirit of revelation came to honor it. You have stopped buying it. Go and buy them again. 
go and find a place where you used to sit alone with God I'm too busy I have counseling to do I have mentees and sons in ministry and you would die there and they will go to the next move because they are followers you are worried and obsessed about many things but one thing is needful to sit at the master's feet please listen to me the things you did that brought you to this realm go back and start creating the atmospheres for them again hear what I'm telling you this is not the issue of I'm a big man now no 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 I have my notebooks you see my notebooks I can I can gather all of them for you from the time I started working with God when I go for retreats I go with all of them all of them Lord what did you say my God look at what you said I bought new ones for tomorrow I buy it like this and I show the Lord I say Lord see it your student is here again packs of viral I'm ready because if you are not ready to hear and listen and write he's not ready to speak the level that koinonia is right now is already exhausted there i'm already preparing and aligning for the next seasons not today the preparation of yesterday brought us to where we are today thank god for what god is doing around the world through this ministry but my brothers and my sisters is child's play and if we remain complacent clapping we will become like the old wine we must be at the cutting edge of god's move through hunger genuine hunger oh that we'll have men and women of god again who will organize program for others but for yourself you organize a program with the same energy for others for yourself Next point, my time is up. My God, you want to come up higher in the spirit, you will need an encounter with the spirit of prayer and supplication. Please write it down. This is one of the dimensions where the prayer ministry is irreplaceable if it is the next level and the next move of god there is no there is nothing you will do to replace the ministry of prayer jeremiah chapter 33 and verse 3 please write it quickly call on to me and i will answer the revelation is an answer is a response I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty things that are not yet captured in your experience call on to me call on to me let me tell you something I've observed and I, I say this respectfully and I think it's a correction that the body of Christ needs to get there are few believers who pray for edification most believers have left the ministry of edification to prayer most of our prayer is either warfare or request there's nothing wrong with warfare there's nothing wrong with request but let me tell you the dimension of the growth dimension of prayer is for edification where you don't enter the place of prayer with a prayer request where less than five percent of your prayer is in english you are not just entering to harass God you are not just entering to say Lord there are powers sitting on my destiny leave destiny the goal is edification and you feel the growth you feel the stretching from your spirit man very few believers pray for edification you can know it because you stand near them they are weak as weak as whatever they love God but their capacity is weak strength is discernible is why we fall off over everything you don't get this miracle you don't get that miracle you harass God all around but there is a level of strength and stability please hear me the next move of God will come on the wings of genuine prayer 
thank God for miracle service don't get me wrong there is a place of supplication and all of that and there is a place of intercession for others but can I tell you this those who were here many years ago in Zaria will tell you there were few times when many people today that are greatly used by God around there were few times where people took out time to actually pray for their own request believers who gather and just are praying no prayer point no prayer request is towards the end of the prayer they'll no, just say lord just to let you know we have not eaten and we trust your grace for supplies just to let you know that we have this 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 issue but the average believer right now prays but our prayer does not bring the level of growth and stamina because that prayer is largely driven by lust the need for things so i can go to pray and spend six hours there correct well done but that six hours is almost five hours of harassing god when will the power come oh god is that prayer that's inquiry you've not started praying there are few believers who can who can pray if a request is not if a prayer point is not raised you want them to pray you have to raise a prayer point say this then they say oh, I am now follow and, and pray it turn it into a prayer point but when you say let's pray they just stand and say so what should we do now and other people are praying and they are just watching but when it's all right everybody stand up Lord Jesus Lord Jesus my life my life this and that this and that I'm not saying anything is wrong with that but have you learned the edification ministry of prayer the edification ministry to the point it used to be a big deal to be filled with the Holy Ghost if you were not filled with the Holy Ghost it was as if you were naked when believers gather by yourself you will find one brother and say sorry can you pray for me it used to be a project but right now there are believers who can be in a place for many years they know about being filled with the Holy Spirit and they don't argue it but they have not seen the need they just feel one day if it happens let me just be filled capacity capacity there are set there are certain levels of grace and anointing that is a waste to come to you it's like pouring a drum of water inside a cup it doesn't make any sense you need to expand please tell somebody expand 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 you don't expand by preaching you don't expand by going for ministration you don't expand just by by doing Bible study for others you don't expand by conducting deliverance for others no you have to lock yourself lock yourself look at Jesus the Word of God filled with the Holy Spirit while others are sleeping they are the ones who need him he will get up in the morning and pray for hours it was a daily habit to the point that when it was time for him to go to the cross from the communion the upper room he branched Gethsemane and prayed there he spoke a parable to the end prayer is an instrument that we can use to correct anomalies I agree but please hear me learn to get into the place of prayer without prayer points the prayer point is you the prayer point is you many of those things will be answered when you are answered the prayer point is you there are many many requests that are a revelation of weakness when you access strength with God you will check and not find the prayer points again and you are looking at time you are not praying you are praying you you pop tom tom and you, put it. you are not praying five minutes you know let me tell you this god loves everybody but he rewards seriousness god rewards seriousness there are pastors who are like that every two minutes you are licking something or swallowing something 
there are times that you go to pray my brothers and my sisters you don't know whether you are on earth or you are in heaven you don't know it's a realm there are many things about prayer when it's said most believers don't know because that is a progression in a realm that you must get to for that thing to make sense we must pray our weaknesses are becoming very glaring we must pray for capacity in fact most people never sought anointing it was a byproduct of some of these things they didn't even know that anointing was to be sought directly now all and sundry you see a lazy people around crying for Benny Hinn's grace in in the secret place five minutes lord a, a double portion of what is on Benny Hinn. Let it, and God is trying to say no 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 I can give you just, I don't want any he, who, you know if you are God you give good gifts to those who love you and God said this is not how it works have regard for Benihim not just God you want a double portion of his anointing and you are there five minutes snoring back five minutes snoring back no Revive your prayer life. Revive your prayer life. Revive the edification dimension of your prayer life. Revive the edification dimension of your prayer life. Revive the edification dimension of your prayer life. Please hear me. Revive the edification dimension of your prayer life don't just pray needs don't just pray warfare pray to grow pray to grow that's how many of us enter the realms of visions it was not a conscious request you pray your way till you break the gates that closes this realm and the next realm prayer like a system of transport revive your prayer life say amen there are men of God who don't pray they are praying for me that's a deception is a deception from the pit of hell let me tell you this if you are a man of prayer and you are edified through prayer there is a signature that that the strength and the health of your spirit man is written upon you are we together now your communication and everything shows that there is a track record of prayer you can stand on stage and mumble tongues and people look and the, the scarceness you know that this one is just is just it's not just the huskiness of your voice there is a it, it, the deep calls on to deep people know that this one mm -mm, you have you have is like creating a hole there is a a position your leg can stand in prayer when you find a widespread congregation not praying, it's because the leaders don't pray. You only transfer to people out of the abundance of the grace that is on you. Please learn to pray. Don't pray when you have a meeting. This is what people do. When they have conferences, they now organize imaginary um, um, five or seven days prayer I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that but if you have to wait for a program to pray you will never be powerful in this world everybody say prayer I'll find a place to stop so that we can continue a man of God said something that blessed me I think it was Dr. Paul Enenche I heard something that he said I, I scrabbled it somewhere and it it blessed me I said boy I was going to share this I can I can I can't find it again but I think he was talking around the fact that it was it was something about prayer how that when prayer changes you then everything that belong to the old you will have to go with the old you because you are now changed are you seeing that now yes it's like changing an house. i don't need to carry the tree that was in my former house i didn't like it so i left the house the tree goes with it 
when you are changed many requests change too he spake a parable listen the church started on the wings of prayer and we must pray we must pray those listening to me please pray it doesn't matter what nation you are in pray you don't have to be the president of anything to pray right now this obsession about coordinator i'm the coordinator of a prayer group so i pray if you pray because you are a coordinator you are a hypocrite coordinate yourself behind a tree coordinate yourself behind a door and sit down and pray if there's no space in your house use your bathroom use your toilet lock up that place and pray stroll out in the night and pray you don't have to shout and harass the people there but pray if your bed is uncomfortable stand up from it stand up from it don't pray one leg is on the ground 20 or 40 percent of your body is on the bed and you are praying god knows you are weak he doesn't leave you weak he gives you strength prove that you have received it by standing up don't have to have a bad dream then you wake up and say you don't I will show you that I'm a member of Koinonia Shaka, ta, 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 ta. No, no 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 make deposits of that prayer so that while you are sleeping the prayer is like you praying there are people who are praying even when they are not praying yeah? their prayer has created a prayer motion that even in their sleep prayer is going on their prayer has become a portal for angelic activities they don't have to pray for it to start call on to me call on to me call on to me Zechariah chapter 12 we'll stop here and pray we'll continue next week Zechariah chapter 12 and verse 10. Come up here through prayer. Verse 10. Zechariah chapter 12 and verse 10. And it shall come to pass in that day, said the Lord, and I will pour upon the house of David, the house of Koinonia, and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the spirit of grace and supplication. And they shall look upon me whom they have pierced and they shall mourn for him as one mourned for this and that and that and that the spirit of grace and supplication is a spirit that comes upon you to pray if you pray only because you are in prayer band you are not a prayer warrior a prayer warrior is not somebody what is who is a warrior remove prayer a warrior boxer learns every day a warrior chef cooks every day whether there's an appointment or not a warrior lecturer teaches every day a prayer warrior prays every day if a prayer warrior prays only when there are people there so that they will hear your voice you are doing exactly what the scribes were doing the scribes and the pharisees were never called prayer warriors they were called hypocrites are we together we'll take 10 minutes or so to pray come up here new dimensions in the spirit Prayer. hallelujah before we pray just cry in one minute Lord thank you for what you have done at this level but baptize me with a fresh hunger a hunger that swallows up every achievement that has been wrought in God in my life thank you oh God for the people I have mentored but a fresh hunger pray for a baptism of spiritual hunger culminating into passion not just passion for studying books not just passion for studying the Bible not just passion for going to church not just passion for serving in the house of God passion to pray 
not just praying and asking praying and growing praying and rising are you praying Honga o God, Honga o God, Honga o God, Honga o God, Honga o God. Shake it, shake it, shake it. Rakata brandas kada balakatu. Honga, Honga. Challenge pride. Challenge the deceptiveness of fame. The deceptiveness of fame glory. Thank you Lord for these things you have done. But I cry for hunger. I cry for a test. To understand what you are saying next. To understand what you are doing next. Parado shalakata. Hallelujah. 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 In the next maybe five to ten minutes, I just want you to blast in tongues. You are not challenging any demon. You are not asking God to give you anything. No tea, no bread, no anointing, no ministry. You are praying for your edification. That your spirit man be built. Enlarge your capacity in the spirit. Enlarge your vision in the spirit. Enlarge discernment in the spirit. Shanabash, Rakata, Rakata, the Prakatelech, Sham Prato, Sekete, La Parantas, Kaparo, Seketa, Epros, Kemarato, Shelekato, Sebret, Shekanegenegenebos, Kaprato, Kaparo, Sasia, Bakata, Empro, Nasadash, Kala, Pros, Geneva, Hashanabos. Though our outward man perish, yet the inner man is renewed. E prakato baruza ne kaposh kala pres, e prakato skele katosh kama hasha, e deno skele de shana marukata. Shaka teka teka te, shaka te prakka te neka te prakka te neka te bosha neka ta, e prakka te teka te kaka te kaka te prakka te neka te prakka te, shene kos kabanda baruza kate neka to, e bosha ne skana kata prakish, neko kita seke te, e te teka te bakata prak. Pray, believers. Pray and rise into untold dimensions. Come up here. Access to light. Come up here. Access to true power. Come up here. 
access to untold dimensions of the workings of the spirit the spirit of grace and supplication the body the flesh may be weak but i tell you the spirit is willing willing to go to a higher dimension willing to go to a higher face willing to come up to a level where you will see the things that must happen pray young and old be a man of God you don't have to be a woman of God you don't have to be a deacon you just need to be one hungry and passionate for another dimension higher than that which you have seen don't be tired for my spirit man on behalf of the generation committed to me on behalf of the the mistreated to be lekatarika to sebreka to jeneketa salamana kata salamana kata paraka to sezem emprakata kata te palaka to Shabros Kamahashanish, Eprakatekatekatekatekatekate, Shabrokoto Parakato Zedegeshia. Karabadanda Shalabarakatos Kamaradagesh. Eprekete barondo sama hashaba lakata Arena mashana nana dena matani anama Shele masena marie shali banana nana 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 Karabakata rikete balaka pros Bakarakatos ke barindes kanamarata shalabadea Do not be drunk with wine wherein is excess But be ye filled with the spirit Speaking to yourselves in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, making melody in your heart to the Lord. Adabarandas kabarato shalakata pranegate katos kele baruta segete bash. He speak a parable to the end that men ought always to pray. Men ought always to pray. The the cure for spiritual laxity is prayer. The cure for spiritual limitation is prayer. The cure for timidity and weakness is prayer. The cure for weakness in ministry is prayer. The cure for spiritual weakness is prayer. The cure for aberrated dreams and visions, prayer. The cure for stale revelations, prayer. The cure for the absence of power, prayer. The cure for newness without freshness, prayer. Shalabarakata, makata braskata barakate. Shakata, shakata, shaseta, ambrata, barakata, bata. Hallelujah. Let's 
listen listen let me tell you something let me tell you why many worshipers don't receive songs because they don't pray many worshipers write songs they wax album but they don't pray one of the proof of a healthy prayer life is the reception of spiritual songs let me tell you you don't have to be a musician there is a dimension of prayer that you get to you must receive melodies in the spirit you must you may forget it after the prayer but you will need it as a ladder to keep climbing I tell you why many there are still songs in the church because many of them are composed composed by an appetite to generate revenue there are people who used to sleep with guitars and keyboards and they will lie down and play for hours 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 that's how to be a worshiper that's how to bring songs from heaven I tell you why many preachers are not fresh they quickly open their Bible and browse on YouTube and browse on the internet you prepare your sermon not by studying prayer creates the coordination on what to study if you sit down with a notebook and you just feel I know what to say oh I'm teaching about this no you carry your notebook you carry this when I go to bed my Bible follows me my books I'm on one side my Bible is there my laptop is there my phone is there everything that helps my spiritual life lies down the bed with me you don't prepare a message by going on YouTube you prepare a message by going to the secret place you pray and pray and you get to a point where your spirit man begins to zoom around a central thought that the spirit is speaking you see that and that's how series upon series will come out if you if you do ministry and preach just by looking for sermons per week you will not last one month you will not have anything to say again before the time of prayer you may not even know what to share in a conference what to share in this boy you just pray
beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life, that even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise. I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain.